What's up guys, Spin Firearms here. I'm pretty dang sick right now, but you know the hustle, you know how I am, still putting out content. And this is actually a viewer requested video. They said, Spin, I know you have a lot of handguns, but if you could only keep 10 for the rest of your life, you could only have 10, which ones would they be? So today I'm gonna break that down. And honestly, I gave it some thought. I have a lot of handguns, um, all sorts of price ranges, you know, stuff that's $200, stuff that, you know, I have builds that are, you know, 14 to 1600, all sorts of stuff, right? And today we're going to touch on that. Another thing I wanted to mention is I make zero money off of it, so it's not shilling, but I did ask Optics Planet if I could get you guys a coupon code. So code SPNF will save 7% over Optics Planet. I know things are expensive right now, so that could potentially help. I just got the SCS. This is the best direct mount optic on the market, in my opinion. I absolutely love this thing. We'll touch on it later in the video. And also, if you guys are looking for a holster, Blacksmith Tactical, code SPN for 10% off. That's all I carry with. This literally just came off me. So my carry gun is going to be in the video. And they're just great holsters. They have wedges. They have all sorts of accessories, um, patterns. I sort of like keeping it like this, though, and like this because it keeps it affordable. You know, adding a pattern, you know, is really nice and cool. But if you want to save a little bit of money, that's the way to go. Just thought I'd mention that. Oh, wait. This would never be on that list. Sorry, guys. All right, let's get into the real list. Today, let's touch on it. I'm known for small guns, uh, subcompacts, micro nines, pocket pistols, but we're gonna start off with a compact. This is one of the compacts I would keep. Um, even though I don't carry this, I am not a security guard, I'm not a police officer, I'm not in the military. This would be my, you know, you know, crap hit the fan handgun. You know, uh, I don't know, my battle pistol, right? I love this thing. Reliables can be... And once again, it has that direct mount SCS, allowing it to sit extremely low, making it such a smaller package. Um, but I do love the CZP-10 series in general, and I think the C um, is one of my favorite handguns. And honestly, it took time to grow on me because I don't like big handguns. I like concealable stuff, smaller stuff, lighter stuff, and I really get good with those. Um, so sometimes it even makes me throw shots on larger handguns. But this thing right here is probably some of the best bang for your buck. I'm a hardworking American just like you guys. I do new construction plumbing. Um, so I try to keep it affordable and reasonable. And that's why I'm actually dirty right now. Um, but yeah, that's definitely one of them. Next up is going to be actually another compact. And that's going to be my Glock 23. The reason why I Glock 23 over my beautiful Glock 19, even though it looks sort of crappy. Um, I've had this thing for forever. So one of my first 10 handguns I ever bought. Absolutely love this thing. But the reason why I would choose a Glock 23, and once again, they're interchangeable, basically. Uh, I love the 19. Give me either one. But I can make this a Glock 19. So going forward, I like having options. I can have this in 40, uh, 9mm as well as 357 SIG. They even make a 22 long rifle kit for this handgun. So that's another benefit, right? But yeah, this thing as well. It looks like crap. looks like junk. I bought it used for a really good deal, really good price. Threw some sights on it that I had laying around. You know, I like this thing. The power of 40, in my opinion, is definitely worth it. I don't carry only 40 Smith & Wesson whatsoever, but... I do like it, especially in wintertime, you know, potential wood, wood scary in certain areas, stuff like that. But yeah, the Glock 23, you know, you just can't go wrong with it. It doesn't come optics ready, but the thing is a shooter. Next up, you guys could probably predict Springfield Army Hellcat. Between the three um, models that I own, they have like 20,000 rounds between them. Uh, they are just beast. They just run and run and run. I actually have a series on this where it's called basically... Um, Journey the Hellcat because I'm trying to get this thing to jam. Now, I'm not being ridiculous. I'm not jamming it up with sand and dirt because that just wouldn't happen in a self-defense encounter. As well as I'm not serving. Therefore, there's going to be no sand, dirt, or anything like that in my concealed carry handgun. It's going to be well-maintained as well as kept in a holster. But I've ran these things really dirty, steel ammo, almost every hollow point you can imagine, and the thing just keeps running. Now, the Sig Sauer P365 is uh, less snappy, 100%. The trigger is much better. But the Hellcat is more accurate, and on top of that, if you learn how to handle the recoil of the Hellcat, it'll become your best friend, because it's small enough to go everywhere with you. Next up, this might shock some of you guys, but you got to get a pocket pistol in there just for deep concealment. I'm a father, um, and you know we're in a really divisive place in our country right now, and a lot of people don't like firearms. And I take my kids to the park almost every single day. That's not even an exaggeration. Probably five to seven days 
or five out of the seven days a week. I kid you not. We always go to the park, go on walks, and there's other parents there. And they, you don't want to cause a scene. You don't want the kid to see a handgun and freak out and get scared because you don't know what their parents told them. So I'm respectful, and I choose to pocket carry at events like that. For instance, my daughter's birthday, it's going to be at this trampoline park. I don't want you know to affect my daughter's life by the parents seeing me carrying something. I don't. Therefore, pocket carry. It's a genius way to go, even if you want to carry a backup because you're going to a worse area. There's nothing wrong with that. I'm all about safety and make it home at the end of the day. That's what carry is all about. So the Smith & Wesson bodyguard is the answer to that. 10 plus 1 in this setup right here. Um, two fingers on it. I mean, this thing is a shooter for its size. I really like it. I know some people have been having some issues with some Smith & Wessons, but for me, so far so good. Love this thing. 12 plus 1 that with that extension makes it so you can get almost 3 uh, finger contact. Next up, I have to go with it. I didn't think I would want it, but... It, it's grown on me. This is a new pickup of mine a couple weeks ago. And since then, we've put it through its paces. Hundreds and hundreds of rounds already have gone through this. Hollow points. And it just rips. And I just want to mention the only hollow points I've ran through it so far are a couple G9 Defense, some Civil Liberty, and then some Winchester Rangers. That's all I've done so far, and it was only a mag of each. Therefore, it's not completely tested, but so far, it's been reliable, and I can see where it's heading um, in the reliability department. But... What I would say about this is, if I want, the reason why I picked the Glock 30, it doesn't even have to be the S. It could be the SF that I have, or a regular one, or the new Gen 5, which I hope I'm, you know, plan on getting. But, you can convert them to 10mm. I wouldn't do it with a thinner slide on the Glock 30S, but if I have my Glock 30 SF here, which they're interchangeable, you can convert that to 10mm, making it a bare defense, a woods defense. And when you have a 10mm, it's literally, um the one handgun that can take down anything in all of North America, and that's a big statement, right? So the Glock 30 or Glock 29, if you converted it. Love the Glock 30, accurate as can be. People think it's going to be really snappy, a lot of recoil, uh, and it's really not. You just got to train, get a good grip on the handgun, and learn the fundamentals, and uh, it's not that bad. And once again, guys, I'm sick, so I apologize. Next up, you knew it was coming, but it would be this Glock 26. This setup right here is perfect. I have a Gen 5 MOS um, with an optic on it. Awesome optic. I have a Delta Point Pro. Once again, code SPNF at Optics Planet will save you 7%. But I would still choose this Glock 26. Actually stippled and the finish done by my buddy Aaron. Uh, you can go look up that video that has his info or maybe I'll even post it below. But he did an awesome job on it. I mean, the thing is just crispy, beautiful, just a regular Gen 3. Nothing special about it. New sights on it. American flag, backplate, because we need more patriots. We need more people that are for the country nowadays because things are just <laughs> the opposite. It's ridiculous. Pierce uh, grip extension, they work with Glock on these extensions, so you know they're going to be reliable. No rail, no optic, not needed. This handgun is just solid as can be. Um, and I absolutely love this particular Glock 26. Next up, it might shock you, but Springfield Armory XD Mod 1. This handgun has 14,000 plus rounds. I don't know the exact round count right now, but I know it's over 14,000. This is one of my very first handguns I ever got. It has a new replacement barrel in it. Uh, had a couple spring changes, or part changes, I should say. Not because it failed, but because I wanted preventative maintenance. I didn't want it to fail. This is what I carried for a long time. This is what I learned to carry with a round in the chamber with. Because it had that grip safety, it just felt better in the mind. So to newer shooters, it's a great way to go because it's very flat, has capacity, can flex into many roles, could be your home defense potentially, but it has that grip safety um, to let you know basically you have to have that press down and the trigger at once. People say, oh, what if you don't get your hand on it? Are you going to be shooting like this? Are you going to be shooting like this? Are you going to be shooting like this? Like, come on. If you're just touching it, it will go. You don't even have to have it all the way in. And I'm a Glock guy, but yet you see what's going on. Uh, we may be doing 11. I don't know how many this is. Sorry, my pile got mixed up. Anyway, Springfield Army Hellcat Pro Comp. It's the way to go. This thing will make you deaf, though. <laughs> I hate to say it with certain ammo, but if you're in a self-defense encounter, your body basically would protect you um, from that in a way. Um, but still, you may have some he hearing impairment after the case. But it's just flat shooting. It's a huge upgrade to the Hellcat, which most people consider to be snappy. And it's just got a huge comp, which technically it's a port. Um, you have a rail, awesome texturing, awesome night sights. Everything's perfect about this handgun from the box. I did just want to swap out the trigger. You don't have to on these, but it is a nice upgrade. Apex is reliable. They're the way they're go, the way to go. They're quality. Um, this combination almost cannot be beat, in my opinion. 
Uh, the Hellcat Pro Comp is something you can conceal for basically any body type. 15 plus 1 even has a 17 round mag that a lot of them are coming with nowadays. And they just run. It is a great way to go right out of the box. You can even throw a Vortex Defender or something like that. Keep it still affordable. You know, if you got a Vortex Defender for this thing, um, you'd be sitting at probably, what, $750 to $800 with an awesome setup and a dot. You can't really beat that. It's an awesome way to go. So, love that. Now, this could go many ways, but this is the one I've been carrying today. So, this is just what we're going to talk about in this video. But basically, any shield. It doesn't matter if it's the 1.0, the 2.0, the 40 Smith & Wesson, uh, the one I have in 357 SIG. doesn't matter if it's a new carry comp, the Shield Plus. It does not matter. Any shield. I will take any of them. It, uh, I can close my eyes and just pick one. And I don't care if I got the regular, you know, 7 plus 1, 8 plus 1 one, or Shield Plus. It doesn't matter which one I picked. I carry this one for a reason, and it's because I'm good with it. It's reliable as can be, and it's just so flat shooting. It feels like you're shooting a 22 with those ports. I love this thing for self-defense. I trust my life with it. If I gave it to my wife for her to carry this instead of the Walther PPS M2 she likes, um, I'd be perfectly fine with that. I'd be perfectly happy. This handgun will not let you down. None of the shields will. There's a reason they're so dang popular. Um, it's just a handgun I really like and trust my life with. And um, yeah, like I said, if you don't, if you're like, oh, it's not the Shield Plus, I would take the Shield Plus too. They are all fine. They're all interchangeable in my opinion. Yes, this has a little bit less uh, capacity, but what I really care about at the end of the day is my accuracy and reliability. So to me, it's not always about round count. It's about how well the handgun performs, and this is going to go bang every single time. I'd rather have 7 or 8 plus 1 with mag guts um, than 15 plus 1, and you have to clear malfunction every two rounds. So it is what it is. Last but not least, this may be number 11. I don't know. Sorry, guys, I'm sick, and my pile got mixed up. Glock 27, um, this right here is the Gen 5, but it doesn't matter. Gen 3, Gen 4, Gen 5, you can't beat them. They're just great. This is my carry 27, though. This is legit. I know I have a, lock, a lot of Glock 26s, a lot of Glock 27s. This is legit the 27 that I carry the most. It has a performance trigger in it. Um, it has Glock OEM, so this is an OEM part, extended uh, slide stop. The OEM performance trigger, once again, is OEM. Even though it doesn't come in the gun, Glock sells it as an OEM part. And then, once again, an American flag. I just like having those on there. Um, I think it speaks to who I am, what I represent, and what I believe in. And you don't see that anymore. People are <laughs> stomping it, burning it. Uh, they just have no respect for it anymore. And, you know, it's really frustrating to see as an American. And regardless if you like the choices I made in these handguns or not, the gun community needs to, you know, be one of those communities that's there, sticks together, and continues to fight for our rights and be there for each other, basically. Uh, Pierce Grimp extension, uh, once again, Pierce worked with Glock. So these um, extensions have zero issues. They're, they're just great. And the reason why you saw, like, on my 26, um, the reason I have it like that, even on my shield, is because it doesn't affect printing. You still get a three-finger draw, or in this case, two and a half, but you don't have that extra where you print sticking out right same with this uh it doesn't add capacity but it also doesn't affect your print which is really nice and that's why i do it um but yeah i could turn this technically into a glock 26 a glock 33 or 22 long rifle as well but i just like this thing i'd rather have one of each you know with me in that list of 10 i just love them that much they can literally be used for anything in life uh two awesome handguns i mean i'm telling you guys just awesome awesome reliable handguns Every time someone has bought one based off a recommendation, they come back happy. So I hope you guys enjoyed that video. Let me know if you like that list or not. Let me know what your list would be. Thanks for watching.